and welcome to the show. In this week's Moscow Out episode, we'll be taking a look at the subject of scent and perfume. If you could only smell through television, this week's episode promises to deliver sensory overload. And from Russian brands to international names, we'll be taking a look at the history of fragrance, new Western imports, various shopping locations, and personalized eau de toilette. And we start off here at the glamorous Goom department store located next to Red Square. The word perfume comes from the Latin phrase per meaning through and fumus meaning smoke. From the incense of ancient cultures to modern day designer brands such as Calvin Klein, Guerlain or Chanel, the love of fragrance has been known in society for thousands of years. As ideal presents for loved ones, a romantic gesture or otherwise, most people will admit perfume is a great and easy gift to give someone. The store, particularly here, stocks dozens of different brand names. French, British, American, the influence of the Western world in the Russian capital is only too apparent. However, locals do pay extra for such luxury goods. And in today's hungry market, prices here can be up to 30 or 40 percent more. As for traditional Russian fragrances, the popularity of the fashionable Soviet brands such as Red Moscow, Manon, Silver Lily of the Valley and the 8th of March seems to have faded. Regarding Western perfume and connections with Russia, legend has it that the famous French scent Chanel No. 5 was in fact created by the Russian perfumer Edouard Beau, who emigrated to France after the Russian Revolution. Moving on, and I'm here to meet perfumer Jana Gladkova. Having worked in Moscow for over 20 years, she says something guided her to work with fragrances throughout her whole life. Take a look at this room. It's packed with all kinds of interesting bottles, posters and art. Jana is one of the most experienced perfume artists in Russia. Many local celebrities and politicians are among her clientele, while international perfume professionals also acknowledge her work. Vladimir Putin's wife Lyudmila once commissioned me to create two fragrances for her, and after I made them, she also asked me to create one for her husband. When making personal perfumes for high-ranking people, I tried to give them a touch of status. For around $1,000, Jana creates personalized fragrance. Surprisingly, quite often, her clients are not well off. A lot of people save for a long time to have a scent designed by her. The developing beauty and lifestyle market in Russia means big business for foreign perfume companies. And because of this, from high and luxury to middle class brands, many new fragrance names are trying to make it onto the scene here. Some are a success, while others aren't. So what is the secret to launching a new brand in Russia? To discuss this question and more, let's meet this week's guest. Ben, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Um, tell me about your perfume range here. Okay, this is a line uh, called Byrito that we launched approximately five years ago. We've been in Russia for almost two years. I think the Russian market is a place of interest now, especially for when it comes to beauty products. Yes, definitely. Uh, we've seen a huge change in the market, and, uh, and especially this uh, element of curiosity amongst consumers. So it's uh, gr grown extremely in the last few years. How, I mean, there are, there are hundreds of hundreds of different names. How do you make your products unique? Uh, I, I think it's uh, raw materials is one. We placed a huge focus on the quality of raw materials, both natural and synthetic. Uh, and then I think it's the, the composition. Uh, I think the fragrance industry has um, a lot of perfumes that smell the same right. for commercial appeal. And I think there's a few brands that have really focused on creating unique fragrances. And the names are obviously crucial to the success of the business. Tell me about the name of the company and the name of some of the products here. Byredo is um, it's taken from Old English, yeah. by redolence, meaning uh, sweet smelling perfume, nice. uh, but also uh, reminiscent of. And since so many of them were based on memories, it became a short of by redolence. And they're unisex perfumes. They're, they all, they're all unisex. And the names are really um, what I describe as... We've got green, the, we've got you know, loose lips there. There's a few funny ones, yeah. there's a few more serious. Okay. But, but it's, uh, it's really the perfume's reason for being. It starts in the name and that idea, that creative origin. What's your favorite one? I don't have one. They're, they're more like children. I love them all. Well, this one's a different color. Hmm. 
It smells nice. Thanks very much for your time and good luck with uh, your product here in Russia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Next up, the Russian Perfumery Club. It was founded in 2004 and it brings together various companies that work in the fragrances industry. The club pays special attention to promoting Russian made perfume in the country and even organizes an annual award ceremony which marks the best brands emerged in the Russian market. The main idea of the club is to form a perfumery culture both among industry professionals and their customers. We think that it's very important to educate people and explain to them the process of making aromas. It's also essential to respect the customer in Russia, and that, in our opinion, can be achieved by producing more creative fragrances. There are several mass market chains in Moscow, where products of dozens of perfume brands from around the world can be found. L'Etoile is one of such chains, selling both classic and new seasonal fragrances. There are over a hundred shops around the Russian capital, which is always handy for buying last-minute presents. The chain also offers various promotions and special discounts all year round, so many popular fragrances can be found here for a bargain price. And for all those who fancy exclusive products, Moscow's luxurious Tsum department store has a large section of perfume corners on its ground floor. Along with popular world-famous names such as Guerlain or Chanel, there are several brands that can't be found anywhere else in the city, such as Memo, Histories de Parfum and Caron. The latter is over a 100-year-old perfume house from Paris, aiming to stay true to the French high perfumery tradition. Caron's aromatic creations are considered to be pieces of art themselves and also feature in many artworks such as films and books. For example, Caron's perfume called Narcisse Noir, created in 1911, is mentioned in Bulgakov's famous novel Master and Margarita. For more sophisticated products, the Cosmotega project in Moscow offers a variety of selected brands, carefully chosen by the Cosmotega team. Their concept stores try to alienate from the mass market. Environmentally friendly brands are represented at Cosmoteca, brought to Moscow from the most progressive and beauty aware locations around the world, including London, Paris, and Los Angeles. Our final location is a perfume factory approximately 60 kilometers from the capital. The first thing that hits you when you enter here is the smell. Wow, intense isn't the word. Continuous quality checks are organized in the factory and chemical analysis helps to ensure that all the ingredients are in the proper proportions. The wrong amount or mix left for the wrong time can mean disaster. First, the container is filled with alcohol. Then water and a composition of essences is added. Then it's all mixed, drawn, filtered and delivered to the filling facility. Here you can see the print room as it's called. The factory normally buys the finished printed bottles from China, Germany or Italy. But this current batch is a specific one-off order that will be fully produced in-house. There are only five perfume factories of this kind in Russia. Over 400 people work here and they produce a staggering 3 million bottles of fragrance each month. Now this machine here, it sprays the bottles different colours and it can produce an impressive 8,000 bottles a day. The aim at this factory is to keep prices low and the retail markup needs to be as little as possible. The average price for perfume made at this factory ranges from 300 to 1,000 rubles. That's about 10 to 30 dollars. About a thousand fragrances are produced at our factory. 50% of those are our own brands, while the other half is commissioned by various companies. The history of perfume is often intertwined with the history of the human race. Cheap or chic, it's now a multi-billion dollar business. And whether man or woman, old or young, the perfume you choose to wear should be the ideal extension of your personality. And whether you find perfume as a thoughtless overpriced accessory or a fashion must-have, one thing is clear. Fragrance gives people a sense of confidence, pleasure, 
and sexuality. And the final part of the process where the perfume meets the packaging and dressing stuff. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have left on this week's programme. I'll see you again at the same time next week. Until then, from me and the rest of the crew, goodbye. <laughs>